Hey, M. Missouri Online Ground School, Jason Shepard here. And in this video, we're gonna learn how to interpret a standard weather briefing on the iPad. What is happening, M. Missouri Online Ground School? Jason Shepard here, back from Oshkosh, feeling great. So happy to be seeing you all there as well. So, so amazing. Hope you love the footage of flying up there to see kind of how we plan the route, and it doesn't always work out as planned now, does it sometimes? Hey, don't forget, if you haven't downloaded my newest book, it's called Paper to Pixel. It's all about how to maximize using a tablet in the cockpit for situational awareness, real world flying as well. And that's what we're gonna do here today. That book, by the way, you can download for free uh, until the end of this month. There's a link in the description to take action on that. If that link's not there anymore or it doesn't work anymore, it's because we took it down and now you have to pay for the book. So hopefully you get in there before that happens. Uh, this isn't years later you're watching this, but anyways. Um, let's go through, uh, and I'm gonna use ForeFlight, I'm gonna get a standard weather briefing, I'm gonna really show you my thought process going into a standard weather briefing. So let's head over to the iPad here together, and let's just do a route, I've been flying a lot lately, let's go KOCF to KAPF, um, a route I've been flying a lot uh, lately, going back and forth, a 13 knot headwind, two hours, 25 minutes. That's, that's a lot of flying. All right, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and there's the send to button right to the left of edit. We're gonna tap that and we're gonna send this to flights. Now it's gonna take a second to load. That's gonna come over to our flights and then there's a little cloud icon right there. Look at all that weather, by the way, at the bottom of our screen. We'll see if this is gonna be a go or a no go. We'll work on it together. I'm gonna click briefing. Now this usually takes a second to retrieve the briefing, depending on how much data there is to actually uh, download and retrieve. And then we're gonna start with our notums and work our way kind of all the way on through. Some of this I'll breeze through much faster. When I'm sitting down, I do this on my couch while the kids are watching a movie and kind of go through my briefing. I'm gonna do a, an expedited version of that here today with you, just so you can see kind of where my thought process is. So you can see we start out with some closed or unsafe notums. They come out swinging. Um, you can see runway 523 is closed um, and the times and dates that it's closed. So great to see that. Uh, convective segments, and we don't just have one, we have two, as you can see, and our route is in both of them. A good rule of thumb for me is when I'm looking at convective segments on my route, I'm already leaning towards this, eh, may not be a go. If you're a VFR only pilot and there's a convective segment for a portion of your route of flight, it's probably gonna be a no go for that day. But for the sake of uh, learning, let's just keep moving forward. Let's look at some uh, air mets here. Just a center weather advisory here, um, encompassing a little bit of our flight uh, as well, but nothing major there. Let's look at the synopsis. And you can click on all these charts here to see what's causing this. And there's just this low pressure. Remember, a hurricane's a low pressure system, so you can see this counterclockwise rotation just sends junk out over the Gulf, warm, moist air over the Gulf, and sends it right over Florida. It's like this perfect little storm having really these three lows uh, in a row, and then you see all the troughs um, in there as well. Midwest, you got some good weather though. Um, Let's go back to our briefing. Next, I look, like to look at our METARs. Now, a lot of people make the mistake of just going, oh, everything's green, green, green. Okay, that's great, but this is a long cross country. You're not gonna do the whole thing at 1,500 feet. So let's really look here and see uh, and start to read some of these. I see some gusting winds. Look at uh, Crystal River, gusting to 16, broken 2,600. Um, Inverness, INF there, scattered 4,000. Leesburg, LEE, -E, broken 4,900, light thunderstorms, rain. So I just kind of do a quick scan through all of these. Yes, I realize they are VFR by definition, but I see a lot of rain, uh, some light rain. I see a lot of gusty conditions. I see a lot of ceilings that I'm not crazy about. Um, I'm not crazy about broken you know, 3,000 when I'm trying to do 182 mile cross country. VFR perhaps, and even, IFR being in and out of these kind of cumulus clouds that are building this time of year isn't enjoyable either. Let's see if there's any pyreps. There's a lot for, for us right now. And again, I didn't rehearse this or look at this ahead of time. I want you to look and see um, the types of pyreps. Like this one, the type, it comes from an A320. That's awesome, but it doesn't do me a lot of good at you know flight level 350 for an A320. It's just, it's not relatable to me. 
So let's look through here and see some, some aircraft that may apply to us. Here's one, this is an H25B. To be honest with you, I don't know what an H25B is. So I'd be hitting Google, maybe leave me a comment once you figure it out too, looking up what is an H25B. And again, it's at flight level 230, probably doesn't apply to me. Let's go find something, that's a 737. Um, a PC-12, okay, I'll look at a PC-12 just to kind of see what altitude's he at. Okay, this is good, 2,000 feet, sky's clear. That's around Jacksonville though, that doesn't help me a ton. Um, a Lear 60, um, here, Piper aircraft here. Uh, we can see a P-32R uh, um, at 10,000 feet. Again, you're over Daytona Beach. That doesn't help me a whole lot with what I'm trying to do here. I'm just looking to see some aircraft that I can really relate to, and I'm not seeing many of them. Um, I'm looking at just aircraft types. That's kind of how I'm scanning that column there quickly. I'm not seeing a lot of aircraft uh, or altitudes that I can really relate to. Again, an aircraft I can relate to, a BE-20, however, you're over Daytona Beach. Not doing me a ton of good with that, but you get the idea. Here's an SR-22, we're uh, over Palm Coast. Again, not super helpful in the PI rep department this time around, but sometimes they are, and oftentimes they are. Here's what I love to look at. Here's our cloud coverage now. So I love to grab our cloud coverage and really zoom in to see what these tops are at. Look, I mean, Tops, 43,000 feet, 31,000 feet, 36,000. These are serious clouds. You're not getting above these things. These are towering cumulonimbus clouds. They're just gonna get nastier and nastier and grow more and more. Let's look a little bit further in here. I realize the nastier weather is to the north, but there's still some other cells, 43,000 feet. Like these are some serious towering cumulonimbus clouds. You don't wanna go beneath them. You can't go above them. You don't even, you wanna go more than 20 miles around them. That's some serious buildups that you're looking at there. How about our visibility and surface winds? Well, remember that counterclockwise movement I was telling you about? Look at kind of the middle of Georgia. And you see how it's like a little mini hurricane uh, kind of going across there. So that gives you a chance to really see that. How about our TAFs? Same thing here. Going through, giving it a quick scan. I see some IFR moments uh, for the Leesburg area. How about Tampa? Here's Oh, there's a temporary for IFR for Lakeland, gusting to 25. Again, two statue miles visibility. Even VFR, IFR, doesn't matter. In a 172, this is looking like a no-go if this was our flight here today. Let's look at our actual wind chart. Again, you can see how that, that pattern of how the wind is really working all the way on across. Um, really showing this to us at our altitude, that, that movement of the low pressure system. Here's something cool, it won't show a whole lot uh, today, but this is your vertical cross section chart. Um, and this is showing you your turbulence uh, uh, eddy dissipation rate, EDR. It's not showing any here, uh, but if it was, you'd be able to see that here as well. Really, really valuable chart. I've done entire webinars on this, inside, this one chart inside the online ground school. If you're not a member, mzraytrial.com, so you can check that out. Wind's a loft table, so you can really see, okay, do we go lower, do we go higher? I don't think we're going on this flight, but just so we can look and see. Then we get into our departure notams. We don't have, we're not gonna, we, I want you to read through all of them. We're not gonna do that here today. Our destination notams that we can see here, and then any in route navigation notams, and then they follow up with airspace notams as well. Um, airspace pyrotechnic demonstration. That just jumped out at me. All right, special use airspace notams, and then we get into our FDC notams in here as well, just so you can kind of see that not everything here is going to apply to you. Uh, it's gonna tell you about every unlit tower, taxiway, apron issue you could ever imagine, but that's just what it's there for uh, as well. There's your un million unlit towers and everything else uh, if you want to be notified of that. Uh, and then the very end, um, our air traffic control notams as well. And just like that, we're back around to the beginning. I know I went through that really fast. And normally, like I said, it's put on a show for the kids and I go through this very, very detailed the night before a flight and even days before a flight for an, an outlook briefing um, as well, just to continue to immerse myself in this. You see, knowledge isn't power, knowledge is potential power. You can know all this stuff, but if you're not using this to make good go and no-go decisions, well, what good is it really? You need to dive into this and apply this. If this was me today, it's a no-go decision. It's that simple. 
Hey, I can't wait to read your comments below this video. Make sure you like and subscribe here on YouTube and Facebook as well. And don't forget that link to Paper to Pixel, my new book, free download to the end of this month. That's August 2023. The link's in the video description so you can download that as well. Have a blessed, abundant, outstanding rest of your day. And most importantly, remember, a good pilot is always learning. Have a great day, everybody. See you.